We are now coming to the end of the webinar. I extend my thanks to all the presenters in this webinar for their enriching contributions, allowing us to reflect further. I would also like to thank our technical team and our organizing team for their support in the realization of this webinar. Unfortunately, we cannot respond to all your questions, but we, can, we, we will try to answer a few questions, common questions that we got from the Q&A. We have already taken on board most of the questions from the participants in written form. I would like to thank the presenters for responding to the question and answers promptly. However, as we still have some time before closing this webinar, we can still take on a few questions, especially which are related to online teaching and learning, where educators have to cater for a change in pedagogy. So this is a general question that we've got from the different uh, attendees about uh, online teaching and learning where educators have to cater for a change in, in pedagogy. We also have questions in terms of quality assurance with regard to online, which is the new norms. This is also about running online exams and how online assessment can be a reliable means to assess, especially in different fields and subjects. We also, I will just give the questions and then we see who will want to, in, to uh, intervene for the questions. We also had a question on data provision, especially to those who do not have access to virtual learning platforms or Moodle. These three questions are said to any presenters can uh, reply to these questions, can address these questions. Thank you. Uh, can I? Yes, you can, Professor yeah. Ben. Thank you yeah. very much, Dr. Udin. Uh, Actually, as far as the uh, data uh, related to uses are concerned, I think uh, it is uh, directly or indirectly related to that. Uh, we have ensured that uh, on all the portals and apps, we have a dashboard for the public. So the dashboard uh, places on record that uh, who are the people coming and uh, what they are learning and uh, what are the usage of those uh, uh, resources also even if the teachers they are getting trained so how many days they are taking for the uh, completion of the course even the completion rate so all the uh, those details are mentioned even we have embedded some artificial intelligence into the um, e-contents and e-books in the sense that suppose i have opened one chapter whether i have read that chapter or not i have scrolled up to the end uh, page or just i have opened and closed and and I, I went up. So uh, there are uh, provisions and we have enabled artificial intelligence on Diksha platform particularly, digital infrastructure for knowledge sharing. And all our resources are mapped with the chapters. So uh, the uh, textbook uh, page is there already, the chapter digital copy, then audios are there, videos are there, interactives are there. Who are coming to the, those places and uh, uh, using that, so those kind of data are available. But in India, it is a challenge for us. So we are still working on that to uh, how to beautifully do it and ensure that every child uh, learns. So which is our mandate, uh, government's mandate. So that is a challenge. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Much. I think partially I responded. Yes, thank you very much. Anybody else who want to? Yes. Yes, Dr. Ujoga. I think uh, with regards to uh, digital pedagogies, uh, we have spoken about that. Probably Desmond also would like to uh, speak on that. But we have to move on to, to pedagogies which favor mo mostly curation, uh, pedagogies centered on conversations because we are going to use e-learning platforms, social media. So these are new types of pedagogies and pedagogies that involve uh, creation, creativity, because with technology you can create. Actually, um, you just you are not only a consumer of of, uh, of educational uh, products, but you can also become a creator. So that is very important in harnessing technology. And we are it, we have to move from that passive mode of just giving to the learner. But the learner should could can also give to the wider community. So I think that. Or, or that is one of the orientations that we have to, to look about. And, and also regarding the quality assurance aspect, it, you probably all know at the MI is that 
For online learning, you have to write your course. Content is the key and king to uh, e-learning. So you cannot just come into an e-learning uh, situation with learners without any content, without any proper strategy defined. So uh, in, this, in this sense, we are ensuring that quality is maintained uh, at DMI with regards to the online courses. Writing your courses is the baseline, and then we can move on uh, from here. Yes. Uh, can I supplement uh, one uh, thing, Doctor uh, Avinas? What said? Actually, uh, during this COVID-19 period, we had also the same challenge of quality while running the TV channels and radio channels, and also while sharing the contents which are not there and which are the gap areas. And even since we designed an alternative calendar for one week to a second week, third week, fourth week, like this. So we had difficulty that how practicing teachers can come and teach to students uh, in that particular duration, 35, 40 minutes period or the minimum 30 minutes. So what we did, so we uh, noticed that who are the teachers, they have good internet connectivity at home and comparatively uh, having a good camera quality so that they can take their classes from homes. And we picked up that signal from uh, in our studio then we relayed to satellite. Then the satellite carried to all the respective homes through their television, through cable network and DTS TV channel. So the, no doubt the technical quality was uh, lighting and other conditions were slightly poor, but there was a teacher uh, there uh, who can immediately help students through talkback facility, telephone call, and through social media posts, they can interact with their teacher. So, but we had to compromise some quality as far as the technical aspects are concerned. But I agree with Dr. Avinas that we need to develop quality material so that we hook them children. Ultimately, the switch is in their um, hands. So, to switch up. Because if contents are good, they will do. If contents are not good, they will look, uh, see and watch cartoon. So, uh, because that choice is already with them. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah, can I... Can I um Please? Add something to it, yeah. I think the question was related to uh, online teaching and learning. That's what I would like to address. Um, I can't, I'm from education. So um, I like to highlight the fact that, you know, we have learning theories. And theories of learning, uh, if we apply them correctly, will help us do the right thing. And uh, for example, yeah, we started with behaviorist theories of learning way back from about 50 years ago and the common thing that um, the outcome of behaviorist learning made us want to give lectures made us want to uh, give worksheets yeah uh, so that people so that pe the students will um, uh, absorb from the lecture and then just regurgitate so that's typical and then next uh, we had the cognitivist uh, theory of learning and that's when uh, we tried to understand how the memory works, how people, how people think, how people can remember things. And then that's, that's how we have things like advanced organizers and, and all that. Yeah? Even the Gagne's, uh, uh, Gagne's uh, nine steps uh, to instructional design is based on the behaviorist um, as, well as, as well as cognitivist learning if you want to apply uh, those principles. Uh, but lately in the last uh, maybe 20 years, we have constructivist learning. And constructivist learning is what we should apply when we have online forums or when we design uh, activities, open-ended activities for students. You know, it could be project-based learning, could be problem-based learning, but we don't give them the content. The students will have to explore and, and eventually reach, um, reach to a conclusion about what, what they have learned yeah, and about what is right, uh, but of course guided by the teacher. And then, of course, lately we have the connectivist learning, and that's by George uh, Siemens, uh, who's been propagating it as a learning theory, although there is an argument as to whether it is a learning theory or not. But the constructivist learning is when we get students to, to um, uh, do um, what you call this uh, a quest, yeah? a web quest, for example, uh, where they explore um, the internet uh, for information. And when they go from point to point, uh, that means they're connecting from one uh, website to another 
so that's where you say the connectivism. So it's, it's connecting from one thing to another, and then eventually the, 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 the distance will learn something. I just want to share, a um, week before last, I was a guest lecturer for a class, for a, for a university class in Japan. And um, uh, I agreed with the um, course lecturer saying that, okay, let's give the students some activities because I, I told her I don't have time to create slides for one and a half hours of a class. But I shared with her some slides that I had. And then I told her, let the students pick any slide they want, whatever they like, and then have them update or find the context for the relevance of the information presented in the slides. So then what she did was we connected via Zoom and uh, she explained uh, the exercise at the beginning, broke up the students into groups. So they were in two different rooms in the Zoom uh, platform. And then given you know, after about 20, 20 25 minutes, uh, we regrouped the students. So then they presented their findings and I gave them my feedback. So that's some of the things that we can do online. And sometimes we don't even have to do very much work. We make the students do the work. Yeah. So there are very, very, very uh, uh, different examples of online learning. Uh, if we are into forums, especially for postgraduate uh, students, um, we have models like the um, collaborative online, sorry, co community of inquiry uh, model, COI, community of inquiry model. And that model basically uh, highlights that we must have uh, teacher presence, we must have social presence, and we must have the cognitive presence. The, if we have a balance of the three, then we have done our job as an educator to get students to be uh, cognitively challenged, you know, at the right level. And we're talking about adult students yeah, at the university level. Yeah, I think that's where I'll stop. Uh, that's just my, uh, some of the, um, uh, what you call this, some of the examples that I, I can think of right now. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, uh, can I quickly say something? I want to pay tribute to Professor Zorani, that's my Master of Instructional Design Lecturer at Open University of Malaysia. And today we're speaking in this platform. And um, I just want to lay emphasis on the pedagogies, which she, I mean, the learning theories, which she just presented, and to lay more emphasis on the constructivist uh, learning uh, design, which we should more lay, lay more emphasis on that because um, uh, we're dealing with learners who are coming from diversified background and they are not slates. They know something at least. And so we engage them with activities, let them do the work. We as lecturers, we follow up to see if they are on the right track, just provide them feedback and actually play our role as facilitators. If we go by this design, by this design approach, we're very sure that um, we're going to produce learners, like she said, who are really cognitively balanced. So at the onset, I we always suggest that uh, lecturers have a framework of what they want to deliver as course, get activities, design activities, and get engage the learners to do the activities. So you just facilitate and follow up and see exactly if they are meeting the needs, or I mean, the meeting of outcomes of the course or developing the competencies that I uh, envisage in the course. I thought if we do focus on this design and actually. Uh, focus on um, uh, rigorous instructional design models. This could be very helpful because um, uh, entails having a full knowledge and you know, characteristics about the learners, what their needs are, and designing learning that responds to their needs. And like we had the chair at this uh, at the beginning of this session, the person who delivered the keynote speech, the emphasis on the fact that we have to design learning based on the needs of the society. If you see, then I see the, the transferability of what they are learning, I'm very sure that they're going to develop more interest as far as that is concerned. Thank you. Thank you very much. I totally agree with the presenters that we need to have good instructional design. You design the learning experiences for, to address the needs of the learners. Then we will have um, good teaching, uh, online teaching and learning, and we are sure that students are able to uh, meet the assessment criteria and also develop other uh, skills, transversal skills at the same time. Because while learning, while learning the concepts, they're also learning about the other skills while manipulating with the, the different device on the computer. So the learning experiences has to be designed in a very structured, in a particular way to engage students for uh, effective learning at the end. 
So anybody else, if, I, if yeah. yes? Yeah, 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 yeah. I think, I, think uh, I, was, I highly appreciate the contribution of all the other participants here, all the panelists, especially because we got insight into very practical aspects of this, of this uh, teaching online and teaching in this context, at the same time theoretical aspects also. So I think what you said belongs to your context and at the same time it also resonates with us because we also have a multiple context, you know, not that uh, everything is fine and, and what we've been doing has been, has been all right, but we have uh, people who are, who are still in need, we have students who are, who, are, who are lagging behind, we have parents issues that we have to deal with here. We have teacher empowerment that we have to deal with. So I think a lot of the examples you gave from your context dealing with very difficult situations, I think it's going to resonate very well uh, and, and help us think about uh, certain areas that probably we have not thought about a little bit and, and we'll come back to you and see uh, how we can enrich ourselves from the experiences you have described. So thank you very much. And I think it has been very, very uh, enriching to have people from such diverse environment and some diverse context. Thank you very much. There is one question to uh, Professor Govender. Please share your challenges with regards to level of acceptance and resilience of staff and students to the shift to online. I think I, I did put an answer up uh, for that question because uh, I on the question and answer I responded to that. But uh, basically, as I said before, we did have challenges uh, in terms of staff challenges. It, it was more to do, especially with subjects like mathematics and being an ex maths teacher, I can appreciate uh, some of those challenges. Right? And I did say that one way we did uh, try to um, accommodate the challenge there was to recommend the use of uh, touch screen, uh, you know, laptops or whether it's iPad, or, uh, which facilitate uh, the teaching of mathematics. Uh, but uh, quite often, the, the problem also lies with uh, where lecturers or teachers want to replicate what they do in the classroom. They want to replicate that in an online uh, environment. But where and they're not giving much thought to the different ways of putting something across, you know, uh, rather than writing on a chalkboard or a whiteboard or, uh, you know, that kind. So, yes, there, there was, uh, you know, the challenges that staff did uh, uh, experience, which uh, uh, we have to uh, capacitate them to be able for them to, you know, they have no choice uh, in this matter at the moment now because of the pandemic. So that is why I said, in a way, the pandemic has become a blessing in disguise, uh, where we had some resistance in the past. People have now had to uh, get with it and, uh, you know, start scaling themselves. Thank you, Professor Govender. There is one last question to Sir Michael and Quinty. Please share your experience about teachers' involvement in the design process. Uh, I just want to say here that uh, when it comes to uh, facilitation, teachers play a key role. They are the key stakeholders. And uh, during this period of pandemic, um, each and every, almost most of the teachers have access to mobile phone, like the data which I presented a while, while ago. As in Cameroon, we have 90% of the mobile phone penetration rate uh, with like close to 82% of browsing using mobile phones. And so this is actually a platform that is used to liaise with the teachers, to share their experiences, to come on, to, to, to have a concepted view on how to design whatever is going to be delivered. Uh, but we must affirm here that um, uh, measures were taken. We selected best teachers from around the country to provide content that were subsequently harmonized by experienced pedagogic supervisors. And we also had best, or some of the best teachers uh, records the content that were broadcast on, on TV and radio. So that's how, basically how we proceeded in getting the quality of the content which we've been broadcasting on our radios and TV stations. Thank you, Professor uh, Sir and Quentin. 
So you can still send your questions, comments, and suggestions to the email indicated in the chat that we send you in the chat, and we shall respond to you remotely. So we are coming. We are now coming to the end of the webinar. It's a pleasure having you all on this webinar. The MIE is looking forward for more interesting webinars, which we, you will surely be invited. And thank you very much for your participation and hope to see you again next time. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Wish you all the best. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.